Let praise be a weapon. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let's do it this morning. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing Jesus, yes. We sing your name. In the dark and it changes everything We sing with all we are And we claim your victory yeah. So let it rise Let praise arise Let's declare it today We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giant Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise Yes. Let faith be the storm that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the storm that calms the storm inside of me. So let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, oh, oh. see with us this morning. We pray. We praise you. to earth may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise yeah yeah this is what heaven looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you
Yes, God. Light and righteousness to prevail in our nation. Truth, light, and righteousness. Truth, light, and righteousness to prevail. And I know that will occur. I know revival is coming. But we'd like to have it. Because a lot of people need to be saved. Now, a lot of people need to be saved. That's what we need to do. There's a yoking with Jesus. The ladies at 1030 this Saturday. 1030 here at the church. Yoking with Jesus. And then we have a men's breakfast coming up. We do have, we're developing a team. A team of guys that are going to feed. Going to cook. And a, a group of people. And ladies are welcome to come and cook. I don't know, you're welcome. You can eat in the kitchen. No, no, I'm kidding. But you're welcome. But guys, we, we, we have, you're welcome. Aren't they, Pastor? No, it's guys. It's guys. You don't want to. But anyhow, we're I'm, I'm a little. But anyhow, that's a men's breakfast. But it's an awesome outreach. We want to reach out to the unsaved in this area. And there are three good things when you get a men's breakfast. Number one, you're going to hear the good word of good news. You're going to be able to have good fellowship. And I'll tell you what, good food. And I promise you, Pastor Matt bought all the food. And Dave is going to cook and somebody else. I'm not going to cook, but that's all right. Uh, but it would be a good opportunity to just reach out. What we want to do, we want to influence people out of a secular worldview into a biblical uh, view. And that's the key. We want to take people and bring them out of the darkness into the light. And that's the reason, to rescue the lost. And uh, I tell you what, we had a wonderful Sunday evening service. I believe part of the revival was beginning within our church that we can be a, an instrument of the right revival to the church. And I mentioned also about this. Uh, I would think we need to praise the Lord, but can I pass this out? Okay, can I have a couple ushers and usherettes for someone, please? We're having a community men's breakfast, and if you would be able to give it to a couple people, and um, ladies can have them as well, men, and, you know, and what we want to do is put it up, put one in Kroger's, or not Kroger's. <laughs> Boy, that dates me, doesn't it? <laughs> There is Kroger's in Toledo, Ohio. I want you to know that. Kroger's is there. My son goes there. And, but it's a men's breakfast Saturday. Be registered. Word of Life Church. A great opportunity. Invite some guys to come out. And it should be a good time. And we're going we're gonna to pray and be blessed for that. Father, we, we thank you for your presence with us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We're so glad that when we hear with you and with one another, Lord, you're going to be blessings. Blessings to you. And bless you, Father. And thank you for being our Father. Thank you for loving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Lord, we do welcome you here this evening. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Presence. Well, we love your presence. We just glorify you. We rejoice for your grace that it is sufficient for us, Lord, in Jesus' name.
you've done for me. your ability, Lord, working in us in Jesus' name. That's right. Christ, you are our firm foundation. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never, and I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's, cause he's never let me down I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. But he's never. Faithful 
shaken And I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's, cause he's never let me down He's faithful for generations So why would Sing this together. Everyone sing it out. Rain, rain came, the wind blew, but my house was built on you. I sing with you. Yeah, I'm gonna make it through. Yeah, rain. problems come, remember you've got the problem solver. He is the master over disaster. <laughs> Let's praise him tonight. Thank you, Lord. You're the master over disaster. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. When everything seems to be going south, thank you, Lord, you do pull us up and head us north. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you today and thank you so much. And um, pray for all those that are battling illnesses, Lord, or facing procedures right now. We thank you for your hand upon their lives, Lord, Father, for you are the problem solver. 
We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, O oh God. We ask you to move upon hearts here tonight, Lord, and do a transforming work, Father, a supernatural work, Father. We thank you for your manifested presence in Jesus' name.
tell him from your own heart how good he's been. He's a yes and amen God. His promises are yes. He's never telling us everyone but you gets it. <laughs> it's for everyone. We say yes to you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, for overwhelming us with your with your love. Yes. We're so we're so grateful for your presence. Fill the room, Lord. 
Holy Spirit, we invite you. It's all about you. It's, it's really all about you. We gaze right back at you, Father. Yes, Lord. To lighten our praise, Lord. says the sower or the planter is going to overtake the reaper. That simply means that God is going to do a quick work. He's going to use you and me. You know, there's greatness on the inside of you. You are the hands and the feet of God. You are the church. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. God loves the church. Amen. You are the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many were blessed on Sunday night in the presence of God? Wasn't that wonderful? Anybody want, want to tell about how they were touched or maybe healed or God did a miracle in your life? Elizabeth, you? How were you touched? came hungry tonight, came thirsty, glory to God, somebody else was touched in the presence of God Sunday night, wasn't that wonderful, Kathy? He's made unto you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, and he loves you so much. Joe, lean over this way a little bit more. Let me put, thank you, Father, for what you're doing, Lord, and causing every cell, and that gray matter, the white matter, Lord, all of it, to become quickened, made alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. He's made her quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Father. She's quick, sharp, and bright, and smart. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ooh, yes. As I say it with me, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. For he makes me of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. I'm quick, sharp, bright, smart. I keep saying that instead of saying, Oh, I think all all time is getting me, or I think dementia is sure, sure trying to chase me down. No, don't be saying that stuff. No, be saying, thank you, Lord. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because what you say has a lot to do with what's going to happen. I tell you, church, we release our faith with the words of our mouth. Don't we? Decreeing things. We need to decree. Every brain cell is alive with the power of God. Thank you, Father, that uh, your healing anointing is coursing through me now to kill every abnormal cell and to replace it with healthy, normal cells. And brother, we pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, for your anointing working in him. Yes, Lord, to affect the healing and the cure. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you that Jesus has made unto him wisdom, righteousness, 
sanctification and redemption, Lord. And thank you. Good things are about to happen. Hallelujah. I mean, in other words, we're, no longer, we're not going to have just a status quo, right? But we're going to have extraordinary, right? Say extraordinary. The Bible says, quit ye like men. You're not natural men. You're supernatural men and women of God. We talked about this. The manifestation of the sons of God on Sunday morning. Remember that? The manifestation. The demonstration. The showing off of God <laughs> through his people. That's what he wants to do. Setting the captives free. I don't know how many of you know it, but a uh, young girl came here Sunday night. And uh, she had m many, many issues. And uh, actually she texted us and said that does this, does this church deliver and get people saved? She said, I can't find one. I said, yes, we do. I said, you come expecting. And man, she received. She was set free, glory to God, get gloriously saved. And she sent us a nice text afterwards saying, oh, man, I've never felt anything like that before in my life. I never, I felt the love of God, the presence of God. So I tell you, that's what God's going to do through you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Everybody says, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. He wants to transform lives, doesn't he? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, one exciting thing that's happening is I just saw it on my phone. 4,500 people were recently baptized, water baptized in the ocean in California at Pirate's Go. Now, if you saw, if you saw the movie, The Jesus Revolution, they did all those baptisms way back in the 70s at Pirate's Cove. Well, they did some more recently. And with the same pastor. What was his name? I forget. Rick Laurie. Rick, yeah. Greg Laurie. Greg Laurie. That's right. 4,500 people were, were water baptized here just recently. And uh, so God is moving, isn't he? Hallelujah. Just people came they wanted, from all over and want to be water baptized. I tell you, there's... Uh, the sower is overtaking the reaper. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else really blessed on Sunday night? You wanted to share? Linda? This is from Sunday night now. Um, I've been suffering a lot with toothache. And yesterday I had to go get five teeth pulled. And, but today I'm fine. I'm go, fine. Keep going. I went to work today and my boss said to me, what are you doing here? You should be home. And I said, Carol, we're short-handed. I said, if I call off, you're not. We got the case. She kept saying, I'm going to send you home early. Every hour, she's like, are you all right? You're okay? I'm, I'm fine, Carol. I'm fine. I just, I'm fine. Are you sure? And then that's the Lord, isn't it? I called the owner. The owner said to me, like, good job. Then he came over to me and he goes, we owe you back money and you're going to get a, a pay raise that we owe you. And I just Woo, come on. He said, I see your dedication and your work in and stuff. Awesome. And see. we're just so blessed. And this morning, Jimmy didn't want me to go to work, you know, so he got up and took me to work and picked me up. And, and A faithful man, who shall find? He's taking me the rest of the week because he's worried, you know. Uh, something might happen. Nothing's going to happen. No. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Father. He's Good. faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for what you did in her life, Father. We thank you for the power of God continuing to work in yes, her, Lord. Yes. Thank you for that financial blessing as yes, well, Father. Yes. The one, Jimmy's doing terrific. I mean, he's in a lot of pain, but he gets himself up out of bed every day. And doing stuff. Now I want you, what I want you to do is lay hands on him because you have anointed hands. Lay those hands on him. Will you do that? He is faith. He is good. Come on. Praise him for it. Glory to God. Brother, three, five teeth pulled. My goodness. Woo. Take Back America campaign. I'm going to let you know that uh, now this is from D. James Kennedy Ministry. He says, upset parents voicing their concerns at public school board meetings flagged as domestic terrorists by the FBI. My goodness, just because they said, I, I, I don't want my kids watch, uh, seeing this pornographic stuff on uh, in the library. You know, they, they, 
calling them terrorists, domestic terrorists, terrorists. A disinformation governance board established by the Department of Homeland Security to shut down speech it considers dangerous, your speech regarding God. A father of seven arrested in front of his children by the FBI because his, of his pro-life work. These are some of the things that are going on, folks. We need to continue to pray. Students kicked out of the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum for wearing hats with pro-life and Christian messages. What happened to the First Amendment? Freedom of speech, huh? FBI agents sent to infiltrate Latin masses inspiring Catholics because of their radical traditionalist Catholic ideology, which is pro-life. So these are some of the things that we need to pray, pray, pray about. We don't have a lack of things to pray about, do we? So be sure to come out to Revival Prayer on Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and we're going to pray about some of these things. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and give this morning. And uh, You know, we uh, gave that offering. Or what did I say? Oh, this evening. Yeah, this is the morning. Yeah, I just woke up. No, <laughs> I did take a nap this afternoon. But anyhow, before I came here. But uh, anyhow, we announced that we were fixing a motor on one of our roof, roof units, and it was going to cost $800. And someone just came up to us and gave us a check for eight hundred dollars Sunday morning. Now someone else had given. Uh, there was some other. I think a total of eight eighty dollars had come in. Uh, otherwise, so it's eight hundred and eighty dollars. It's going to be taken care of. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise Him for it. Thank you, God. All right, let's go ahead and give tonight. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Do you have the envelopes? You're passing out envelopes. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't forget, our mission is fishing. We're going to make you fishers of men, right? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By the way, don't forget our small groups. Judy, stand up. Paul Mackenstein, stand up. Let's see, who else do we have? Pastor Gail, stand up. Uh, uh, Bob's not here, too. Yeah, but Bob's not in now. Let's see. Who, who else? Okay. Yeah, Fred teaches some of the class once in a while, too. That's right. Yeah. So we thank God for these people. And listen, this is a great way to mature and grow, to get into these groups. Men's group on Monday night with Paul and ladies' group on Monday night with, with Judy. Then we have men's breakfast coming up, and we want to make that an outreach and bring in people that are lost, people that don't know Jesus, or just maybe there's some people in the fringes that know Jesus and just need to get hooked up. So let's get them in here. All right, y'all set? Let's pray, Brother James. Good to have you back from vacation. All right. Hey, Lord, we just thank you for these signs and offerings. We ask you to use them for your glory and spread the good news of the gospel. Bless the gift giver alike. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's praise him. Sing this chorus together. Fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Cry out, Holy Spirit. 
Point to yourself. Fill this room. Fill this room, Lord, yes. Fill this room. Each one of you is an inhabitation of the Spirit. Join me, let's sing in this spirit. Sipata Colan, Lady Bando, Send Lady Pondo, Lady Pondo, she's the Maniki Yaka Loka Lampai, Oria Sochia Paton Tende, Ela Rebinde, Sele Cocha Niki Pada Fore. Señor, Señor, ya no más soto de arba hambre que le va a Gloria a Dios, Maragui, Shoko Baga, Shakadaga, y vaya con Dios, Shelele, Maramen, Vindo, Chiquilana, Menemen, Vindo. Bruce, would you just read the first three verses of Psalm 18 for me? Starts right there. Let's read those first three verses. I love thee, O Lord, with my strength. The Lord is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my God, my strength, in whom I trust, my butler, and the horn of my salvation. 
high tower, my stronghold. I will call upon you, Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I shall be saved from my enemies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, brother. He's your strong tower. And you can run into him and be safe. Thank you, Lord. He's your rock. He's your fortress. Your deliverer. My God. My strength in whom I will trust. He's also your buckler. The horn of your salvation. And my high tower. My, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise Him right now. He's delivering people from fears. Fears that you don't even know that you have. Psalm 34 says, and I think it's verse 4, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. He's delivered you from all your fears. You sought the Lord, and He heard you, and He's delivered you from all your fears. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear Him. You fear God. You have a reverence for Him. And what's going to happen? The angels are going to encamp around about you. You've got guardian angels around you when you got born again. Did you know that? So there's no need to fear. <laughs> Glory to God. I said there's no need to fear. Fear is not of God. Kick fear out. Spirit of intimidation. 2 Corinthians 1, 7 where it says God has not given you a spirit of intimidation where you're easily intimidated. No, no, no. You're like David. You have dauntless faith. You've been trained. You've had training for reigning. <laughs> so, remember, you've got an angel at your disposal. Only one-third of the angels rebelled against God. That means there's a whole bunch of them. Innumerable company of angels. Can't even count them. So kick fear out. Be bold. This is the hour of the church. Hallelujah. Everybody say, greatness is in me. See, that's not being haughty. He is great, isn't he? And he lives on the inside of you. So greatness is in you. He's given you the word and he's created you to rule. Rule over the forces of darkness. I think Pastor Matt brought this scripture out last week. Fear of man brings a snare or a trap. But whoso puts his trust in him shall be made safe. Mm-mm. So be more aware of his promises than the problem. You have guardian angels to protect you. That angel, show up. Speak to those children. Pull them out of a crack house. Pull them out of the danger. Pull them out of that influence that's negative. Rescue marriages. Angels will be there to protect you in time of danger. Hallelujah. Angel showed up for Peter, didn't he, when he was in jail. Got him out of jail. Hallelujah. So push fear out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
And the angels respond to the word of God, don't they? That's what it says in Psalm 103, that they respond to the voice of God's word. Now, let me ask you this. I'll take the Bible here. This is God's word, right? What if I go like this? Do you hear anything? No. But when you take God's word and you speak it out of your mouth, the angels hear that, and they respond to the voice of God's word. So keep speaking the word. Keep decreeing what you want instead of belly aching about what you got. <laughs> Speak what you want, right? Nona complain. Don't murmur, but begin to speak what you want. Hallelujah. Like one preacher said, if you want the cat, don't call the dog. Or if you want the dog, don't call the cat, right? <laughs> Call for what you want. Begin to decree, proclaim, declare what it is that you want, what it is that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He can undo the work of the enemy. In fact, look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Colossians 1, 12. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, M-E-E-T, which means qualified. Everybody say, I'm qualified. qualified. Qualified for what? To do brain surgery? No. <laughs> qualified for what? To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's qualified you to partake of a, an inheritance. Did anybody ever die and you, there was a will left? And that will is a, an official document that tells just what that person wanted each family member or friend to have as far as their finances and their possessions were concerned. I, I know a guy that writes those up, a lawyer, a lawyer who writes up wills. And uh, that's, a, that's a purpose of it, to let people know what you've been given from this person that's passed away. Jesus died and left you a will. This will tells you precisely what you have, that you have provision, that you have protection, that he wants you to prosper, spirit, soul, and body, that he wants you to walk in health, that he wants you to be mentally and emotionally stable, that he wants you to be living a holy life for him. Because in that, you're going to be blessed, right? The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, yeah, what does it say? <laughs> um, makes rich, but there's no sorrow to do it. What is it? Huh? Let's look it up. Oh, I know what it is. The blessing of the Lord. Everybody say the blessing. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. How about that? You're getting blessed without sorrow. See, the world gets blessed, but they got sorrow with it, right? In many instances. Right? Right? Money won't make you happy, might make you comfortable while you're miserable, but it won't make you happy, will it? Jesus will make you happy. But he'll bless you, he'll give you the blessing, which is financial prosperity, spirit, soul, and body, 
cause you to have provision when you need it. The word rich means to have a full supply. And that's what God's will is for you. And He wants you to have it and not have any accompanying sorrow. Glory to God. That's what He wants for this last day. Because it's you, the church, that's going to go out there and disseminate the gospel and get people born again. So He wants finances in your hands. So you can do just that. Amen. 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 How about the woman at the well? Boy, talk about a harvest. The woman at the well in John chapter 4. You remember what happened there? Take a look up here. Say this is uh, the land of Samaria on a map. When the Jews wanted to go to Jerusalem, they would go up this way and over this way to bypass Samaria. Why? Because the Samaritans thought they were the purebred Jews. And the Jews thought the Samaritans were half-breed Jews. They were looked down upon. They were disrespected. So anytime a Jew was going to go to Jerusalem, they'd bypass it. They'd go up this way and over this way to Jerusalem instead of going right through the shortcut through Samaria. Well, Jesus said, I must needs go to, through Samaria. I must needs go through Samaria. So he cut, took the shortcut, went right through Samaria to go to Jerusalem. And he did so because there was a woman at the well that he met at Jacob's well there. It was outside town, the town of Sychar. And he met her there and told her about living water. He says, you drink of this water and you'll never thirst again. You remember that? Yep. And he told her, he said to her, go get your husband. She said, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you spoke the truth. You've had five husbands and this guy that you're with right now, living with him, is not your husband. She says, my goodness, he read my mail. Yeah. There's a long-standing dispute between the Samaritans and the Jews. The Jews thought that the place to worship was in Jerusalem. And, of course, all the feast days that they had, you know, tabernacles and Pentecost and Passover, everybody would come to Jerusalem for the celebration, for, to worship. But the Samaritans thought that the place to worship was in Mount Gerizim. And so they thought it was Mount Gerasim. The Jews thought it was Jerusalem. And they had this long-standing dispute, not only about their culture, but also about where to worship. And so she brought this up. Where are people supposed to worship? Is it Mount Gerasim or is it Jerusalem? And Jesus said, the time's come when people are going to worship in spirit and in truth. And so, anyhow, this woman was so taken back by Jesus reading her mail that she went into the town of Sychar and told the people, come out and see this guy that told me everything about myself. Really? I mean, he's a prophet. You got to come and see him. Now, Jesus, by the way, when he said that to her, he wasn't condemning her. He was, I mean, he was, he, he exposed the sin, but he didn't, he, he still let her know that he loved her unconditionally. So he really was going out of his way for one person. You know, God will go way out of his way for one person. For you, he loves you. He, women, yes, he'll go out of his way for you. He'll reroute his journey to get to you no matter who you are because he loves you and cares about you. No matter how terrible your past was, he still loves you. And he wants to bring you into the fold. So she went and told the people in Sikkar about this guy. He has living water. He's a prophet. And so all of a sudden, these people followed her out from the town, out to Jacob's well in the outskirts of town. And I believe that's when Jesus said to the disciples, don't say there are four months and then the harvest. Lift up your eyes and look. For the fields are white already to harvest. 
And coming down the pathway were all these people from Sychar coming down to see this man, this prophet, this Messiah. And so they, they all heard him and they got saved. And they said, we didn't get saved simply because of this woman. No, we, fought, we saw him ourselves. We, we listened to what he had to say ourselves. And so, then they said to him, how about staying a couple more days and share with us? And so he did. And the Bible says, and many more believed. He stayed two more days, and many more believed. This was a harvest of souls. I'm telling you, he went out of his way for one person, just like he did the maniac of Gadara. He got on a boat, traveled across the Sea of Galilee for one man who was running in the tombs naked and out of his mind, cutting himself and in chains and broke the power of the devil over his life, cast the devil out of him and got him saved. And the Bible says later that he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Glory to God. Woo! <laughs> He stopped his journey for one person. Why? Because he came to seek and to save that which was lost. This was the first female evangelist. Do you know that? <laughs> Ladies, the first female evangelist. Brought all these people out, and then even more came and got connected to Jesus. Many Samaritans believed. The whole town was changed. Why? Because Jesus was a relational person. You know, if we're going to win somebody to Jesus, we're going to have to learn to be relational. We're going to have to learn how to cultivate a relationship. We're going to have to learn how to be kind to people. Jesus changes travel plans. He cares for the individual. What a beautiful account of a masterful way to bring a harvest. In closing tonight, I want to do something. Ushers, come and help me with this, would you? Here is a way that you can cultivate a relationship or kickstart a conversation with someone to get them saved. Would you pass these out? I want everybody to have one of these, please. Make sure everybody has one. Now, this is very simple. I think I've told you before. I do this all the time. My wife says all the time. <laughs> I think we were at a restaurant the other day, and I think five, I got five people in there. But anyhow, it's a breeze. You simply say, check this out. This will tell you some good news. And if you pray this prayer in the back and mean it in your heart, 23 will be your best year ever, guaranteed. Guaranteed. And that's the way I say it to him. Boldly like that. The year that I gave Jesus, made Jesus the Lord of my life was the best year of my life. I'm telling you how to bring a harvest. What I'd like you to do now, do you have one of these? Everybody has one? I'd like you to turn to the person next to you. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> turn to the to a person next to you. Find somebody and, and just say to them, just hold the track out and say, go ahead and tell them. This will tell you some good news. Go ahead. Now, Gary, don't get ahead of me now. Just the first part. This will tell you some good news. All right, the second part, then you can say, now this prayer in the back, if you pray this prayer, 23 will be your best year ever guaranteed. Yes. And so, and, and then the, the, go from there. Sometimes people say, man, I need a good year. Yeah. And I'll tell them, well, let's pray that prayer right now. Or they'll say, man, okay, I definitely will read this later. I'll definitely, you know. But I, I'll tell you, but there's probably only one in a thousand persons that rejects me. That's right. So practice that. Go ahead. The other person, it's your turn now. So do the same thing. Do the same thing. Check this out. This will tell you some good news. 
This will tell you some good news. And turn it over. If you pray this prayer in the back, 23 will be your best year ever guaranteed. 23 will be your best year ever guaranteed. Oh, church, I'm telling you, this is just a great way to kickstart a conversation. Hey, I didn't give you guys a joke tonight. Did I give you a joke? You want to hear one, and then I'll let you go home. All right. A man was flying from Seattle to San Francisco. Unexpectedly, the plane was diverted to Sacramento along the way. The flight attendant explained that there would be a delay, and if the passengers wanted to get off the airplane, that they could reboard in 50 minutes. 50, 5 -oh, minutes. Everybody got off the plane except one lady who was blind. A man had noticed her as he walked by and could tell the lady was blind because, of, because her seeing eye dog laid quietly underneath the seats in front of her throughout the entire flight. He could also tell she had flown this very flight before because the pilot approached her calling her by name and said, Kathy, we are in Sacramento for almost an hour. Would you like to get off and stretch your legs? The blind lady replied, no thanks, but maybe my dog would like to stretch his legs. So picture this. All the people in the gate area came to the, a complete standstill when they looked up and saw the pilot walk off the plane with a seeing eye dog. <laughs> the pilot was even wearing sunglasses. People scattered. They not only tried to change planes, but they were trying to change airlines. <laughs> Let's stand tonight. Hey, did you get that now? Don't forget. This will tell you some good news. And if you pray this prayer in the back, 23 will be your best year ever guaranteed. Now practice this because practice makes perfect. All right? And then grab you some tracks out there in the, in the foyer. Keep them in your pocket. I do all the time. Look, I see I got tracks right here all the time. So, all right. Heavenly Father, thank you. We want to see a harvest, Father. Oh, God. We know it's going to happen one person at a time. So, Father, thank you that you're mobilizing an army, Lord. These people are your hands and feet. Father, they thank you that they go forth charged and filled with the Holy Ghost and boldness, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great evening. Sorry I went over just a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. Trust in God, my Savior.